magandang araw. Una sa lahat, maraming salamat sa pakikipista sa Pista ng Mapa at maraming salamat na rin sa pakikinig sa aking presentation. I'll talk about openness or what we mean when we say open, open data in the Philippines. So, who am I? Sino ba ako? Ba't ba ako nandito? Uh, my name is Ben. I Some of you may know me. For those of you that don't, I consider myself a geospatial generalist, an open stuff advocate, and a data activist slash maptivist. I currently have my own consultancy, BNHR, where I help people solve their spatial and data problems using open technologies. I, I'm also the CTO and head of strategies for Smart City. We're a nonprofit organization whose aim is to put citizen participation and open data at the heart of smart city building in the Philippines. I also serve as a consultant for organizations such as the Open Knowledge Foundation and Phoebe. Uh, previously, I worked as well with other organizations like HIVOS, School of Data, the Asian Development Bank, and many others. If you want to learn more about myself, uh, you can check out my website, bnhr.xyz. You can find me on social media at Facebook, bnhr.xyz, at Twitter, bnhr.xyz. So if you're, if you're interested with that, uh, go ahead and, and check me out online. Um, but what I think is more important than you know who am I uh, is why we're here. So we're here to talk about data because if probably you haven't noticed or if you haven't heard, data is, is everywhere. There, there's data in the food we eat. There's data in the, you know, in the food we order from Grab, one of our sponsors for Pista ng Mapa. Uh, there's data in the things we bought uh, during the 11-11 sale in Lazada and Shopee. So there's a lot of data out there. Uh, for this talk, we'll focus on or we'll, we'll talk about open data. Because what I always say is that in the Philippines, when we talk about open data, we get the data part right, but the open part, not so much. Sometimes, medyo mali yung open part dun sa open data natin sa Pilipinas. So hopefully, we can, we can talk more about that in this presentation. Uh, by the end of this, uh, hopefully, we'll know what it means to be free and open, the importance of openness, the challenges of open data, know how we can move forward with open data in the Philippines and we can get more memes. So let's answer the important question first. What, what do we really mean when we say open? There's actually a formal definition or a convention on what openness means. It's from the open definition. It says that open means anyone can freely access, use, modify, and share for any purpose. Ibig sabihin, kahit sino, ikaw, ako, ang kapitbahay natin, malaya tayong makuha, gamitin, baguhin, at ipamahagi sa iba yung bagay na consider na open. Take note of that because uh, we will we'll try to think about that when we talk about open data in the Philippines later. So another thing that commonly gets asked is, does open mean free? Uh, ibig sabihin ba ng pagiging bukas ay libre? If it's open data, should it be free data? If it's open source, should it be free software? Well, yes, of course. Open means free, but it's not necessarily, it's pro not probably the free that you're you're the first thinking of. It's free as in freedom. You know, it's kalayaan, it's malaya. It's not just free, you know, not just free t-shirt, like the free t-shirt we get from Pista ng Mapa. So when you talk about open data, when you talk about open source software, and things like that it's the free the free part of that isn't just about the cost it's about the freedoms it's about mga kalayaan na binibigay sa atin ng mga bagay na yon so i, I talk, talk about a lot about kalayaan or freedom ano ba ano ba tong mga kalayaan na to well the open definition borrows and is very similar to the f uh, four essential freedoms from the free software foundation which tells us that uh, you know free software in this case, we can consider it free data, provides us the freedoms to use, study, modify, and, and share. So uh, I have to, I think I have to uh, talk about modify here because it's it's usually a, uh, a very crucial topic for some. And they, they ask, when, they, when you say freedom to modify, does that mean you can, you can change the data that I have? No, well, not necessarily. It means that once I get the data from you, I'm free to modify it so that I can use it for my own analysis. I can make summaries from it and I can share those summaries. At the end of the day, people will still have access to the original data, which is from you, and compare if the things that I modified is, you know, 
truthful or correct in terms of the data that you have. So that freedom to modify doesn't mean that I can take your data and change it or I can access your data from your server, from your database and, ch and change it. It's just that once I get the data from you, I should be allowed to well, put changes in the data, modify the data, create summaries, create analysis that will be useful for me and other people. And I can share the data uh, with, with the modifications that I get, which that I had. Uh, one well, one common analogy that I use is the, the free and open adobo. So uh, the free and open adobo gives you the freedom not only to eat the adobo, but also to add modifications to the adobo, you know, add more seasoning, add more, you know, salt or vinegar if you, if you like, add more soy sauce. And it also gives you the freedom to share that adobo with your neighbor. At the same time, your neighbor gets those freedoms as well. They can change the taste of the adobo to, to suit, you know, whatever it is they want. So that's the free and open adobo. Imagine if we don't have those freedoms in our adobo. Imagine if we aren't allowed to change adobo but merely eat it as it's given to us. You know, life would be a bit, you know, boring for, for us Filipinos who, who really love our adobo. Yeah. So... That part talks a bit about you know the essence of openness, the essence of free and open data. Uh, this this one talks a bit more of you know how do we operationalize or implement open data. Um, there's such a thing called five star open data. It's um, it's a deployment scheme suggested by Sir Tim Berners Lee, the inventor of the World Wide Web, wherein stars are awarded according to the state of open data that you have. So. The better your open openness of your data is, the more stars you get. It provides a great, a very good framework for assessing where you are in terms of opening your data. At the same time, it also gives you what steps you need to to know to move forward with with the, your openness. If you're if if you're you know if you want to know more about it, you can go to fivestardata.info to to read more about you know five star open data. But in in the 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 TLDR of it is that. You have five stars. The first star is you release the data in whatever format under an open license. So something like uh, Creative Commons, GNU GPL, or uh, licenses which are considered open by the open source initiative or, or under the open definition. That's once you release data under an open license, you already have one star. And then for the two stars, you have data that's available in structured machine readable formats. So instead of releasing PDFs, you release Excels or spreadsheets. And then the three stars, which personally I consider to be the sweet spot, uh, minimum um, least amount of effort for the maximum impact, is releasing data in non-proprietary formats. So instead of using, you know, releasing it in Excel, release it in CSVs, or release it in ODS. Uh, the, four, the fourth and fifth stars are more about making sure that the data is within the web and it's linked together, so using URIs and providing proper context. Machine readability. Uh, if one, when we talked about openness earlier and as well as the five-star five star, uh, open data, we talked about machine readability. We talked a bit about machine readability and what does machine readability mean? actually mean. So what when is data machine readable? In the context of, you know, in the context of open data, machine readable does not simply mean openable by a computer. You know, for files and formats to be considered machine readable, they should allow for the easy extraction, processing, and analysis of the data that they contain. In this sense, a PDF is not machine readable. A JPEG, you know, image is not machine, technically not machine readable. You know, because uh, it's very difficult to extract, process, and analyze, you know, tables found inside PDFs or tables found inside uh, JPEG uh, images. Yeah. So, as much as possible, when talking about data, especially tabular data, we move away from PDFs, JPEGs, and doc documents, and just try try as much as possible to release them or get them in, you know, machine readable spreadsheet formats like CSV, ODS. No Excel files, no, no. Or I think we've all been there. We've we've been burning, and someone gives us you know data as a PDF. But you know what really what we really need are data in CSV or spreadsheet format. It's it's very hard. There are ways to extract like using uh, Tabula or other stuff like that. But 
it adds another layer instead of just directly uh, extra, uh, directly analyzing the data you have to extract it first so uh, machine readability is very important it's an important uh, you know aspect of, of openness uh, what what other things are you know wh why is why is openness important I think that's that that's one thing we should answer as well so uh, there's a few things this isn't an exhaustive list but some of the things that that makes you know openness important is uh, transparency and accountability you know if if you don't have data how would you know if something actually happened or how how will we be, how will we be able to uh, hold people accountable to their decisions to how they spent public money for example covid funds phil health funds things like that you know without the data to actually you know be used as evidence you know we can't have transparency and accountability in relation to that openness builds trust if something is open mas madali natin pagkatiwalaan kasi bukas walang tinatago di ba yun there's also this i this concept of integration and interoperability when you use open formats and open standards it's usually much easier to work with them than when using you know closed closed data or closed formats because in the first place there's an added layer of obtaining and securing you know the necessary permissions to work with closed data with open data, you already skipped that step. And I think one of the most important is you can't create solutions to problems you, you have no data of. So it, this is especially true in terms of visibility, in terms of you know uh, sectors of society that's underrepresented. If you don't have data about them, how can we know if we have problems there? So diba, madalas, uh, sometimes people think there's no problem because they currently don't have the data to show that they actually have a problem. You know? So some of some ignorance is bliss kind of thing. Um, with that, let's talk a bit more about open open data in the Philippines. There's actually a lot of open data and open data portals in the country. So you have you know data.gov.ph, you have OpenStat from PSA, you have the EconDV from PIDS, you have the Philippine Geo Portal, you also have PhilJeps has uh, has data sets open for procurement uh, information. So there's there's a lot. Uh, it's just that sometimes you know it, it feels like it could be a bit better, or it, there could be a bit more. Like there could be a bit more data sets on data.gov. It could be a bit more updated. Uh, hopefully, data from GeoPortal would allow you know features instead of just map layers to be there. But there's a lot. There's a lot of open data and open data portals in the country. And you know, if you notice, there's another you know another one. Another part of the open data uh, paradigm in the Philippines that's not here, uh, it's Freedom of Information, or FOI. You know. And I think this is something that needs to be talked about more in terms of open data and openness, the relationship between open data and FOI. Uh, because Freedom of Information and open data, even though they want, you know, they have similar goals, they want the same things. They want government transparency. They want people to have access to data. They're not the same thing. Uh, you cannot and you should not replace one, you know, with the other. You know, don't don't be like Pam. You no, know, there, there's there are subtle differences between FOI and open data. If you if you go down to the nitty gritty of it, you know, think of this scenario for example. Um, if you need to get data under an FOI, you know, under FOI, you need to submit a request to the office and then wait for them to respond where they can either grant or reject your request. This is not the case under an open data policy. Under an open data policy, uh, so long as the data, you know, does not fall under protected data, it's not personally identifiable under the Data Privacy Act, it's not constitutionally, you know, prohibited or protected information, then you should be able to get the data without needing to, to request it, which is very important, especially in times of, you know, of times of pandemic, in times of disasters, wherein you need timely data and you can't afford to wait for, for your request to be approved. Imagine there's a disaster going on. You want to know who would be at risk, who should be prioritized first, but you can't get that data because you need to course it through an FOI request. Or for example, a pandemic wherein walang masyadong tao sa mga FOI offices. Uh, then mahirap 
mahirap i-course through FOI yung ating mga request. So this is where an open data policy supports an FOI, you know, an FOI policy. FOI is uh, reactive and demand-driven, as, as you might have noticed. Uh, data is only released when someone requests for it and that when that request is subsequently granted. But this is not the case for, for open data. You know, open data is proactive and supply driven. So long as it becomes available and that it's not protected, you can you can release it. And data users uh, need not request, you know, or be granted request to to access the data. Uh, you have to think about it as well in the open definition that we talked about earlier, uh, and as well as the you know the definitions of freedom in in data. Nowhere there do you you know hear the word request. You know, open data is not. Request is not synonymous to open data. Yeah. Challenges moving forward with open data in, in the Philippines. Yeah. Again, uh, first one is yeah. When when you require people to submit data requests for their data, usually that's that, that's that's not a good you know thing for openness. It's it's not really open. Uh, you know, you'll be like sad Pablo here. You know, you're waiting for your data request to get approved. And as I've as and, as I've mentioned, uh, one of the scenarios where this really won't work is in terms of in times of disaster, in times where you need uh, you know timely critical data. Isipin mo, you need the data right now, but you can only get it two weeks from now. Then tapos na yung disaster, and uh, you no, know, hindi mo na kailangan yung data by the time you get it. You'll be like you no, know, you'll be like the skeleton here when your data request finally gets approved. So that's one thing we need we 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 have to transcend or we have to talk more about in terms of open data in the Philippines or or we 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 like requests a lot you know uh another one is a lot of us release data in non machine readable formats so pdfs instead of csvs you know it's not open data scanned pdf yeah, I, I you shouldn't consider it open data. We can do better. We we can we can release it in in better you know machine readable formats. So don't don't be like that. If you're a data provider, try as much as possible to release your data under you know an open license and at the same time in machine readable formats, open machine readable formats. Yeah. And then the wombo combo, uh, people who talk about practicing open data, but first of all, it's not online. It's not readily accessible you have to request before you get the data first and then when you do get the data it's on pdfs so don't be like that we have to we have to you know meet these these challenges for us to to start you know talking about open data in the philippines now, one of the things to do this is by going open by default you know right now mostly what well, from experience what we do is we restrict the data first and then we find exceptions if we can open it. That's why we like to give requests. But what's better is we go open by default. We start with the assumption that you know, government data or data funded by public funds should be open and then just find exceptions to, you know, to, this, to this assumption you know, and restrict those that need to be restricted, you know, protected by the constitution and statutes and ethical consideration of data. It shouldn't be the other way around. Um, and one thing that I think is important as well is we, sh we should understand that open data is a spectrum. When we talk about open data, we don't mean everything should be open because open data respects the rights and privacy of its data actors. Uh, uh, in relation to this, that's why we have this you know, concept of data ethics, wherein we evaluate the data practices that have potential you know, adversarial adverse effects to people and society from data collection, sharing, and use. When we talk about data ethic, ethics, it's not just about personal data. The choices that we do for making public data accessible only online when, when some, some people don't have access to it is, is, an, is a data ethics problem. We should be able to make data accessible to everyone so that we don't you know, increase existing inequalities. Data ethics also isn't just about compliance with the law because there are quite a few, you know, data activities that are technically lawful but not ethical. Cambridge Analytica, the emotional contagion research by, uh, by, uh, by, by Facebook. It's also not just about how data is used. 
because even our you know our decisions to collect data affects people negatively like for example it's bad to not collect information about a certain group of people but it's worse if we only uh if we only collect negative you know data sets about a certain group of people because we're putting them at a higher risk of discrimination and profiling uh, one such example is collecting data uh, on hiv aids solely on members of the lgbt community and then data ethics isn't just about restricting access to data because if we have an ethical approach to data it would actually lead to more openness and you know more trust between me the data you know the, the person providing my data and then the person collecting the data yeah. and then we talk about data literacy not just data science you know data literacy involves understanding uh, what data means, how to read graphs, how to draw correct conclusions, and how to recognize when data is being used in a misleading or inappropriate way. It doesn't just include skills, but it also includes attitudes and social structures for everyone to use data. Data literacy is not just data skills. You know, a lot of people who are part of the data, you know, the data community won't even you won't need any analytical interaction with the data. And we should always think about data as being inclusive. You know, no single person, department, or organization should have a monopoly on data or how it is used. So by focusing on data literacy, we're providing people not only with skills, but also the confidence to work and a safe environment to hone their skills and share their work uh, about data. Um, and then we should go beyond data release. You know, releasing open data is not enough. Uh, the end goal of any open data project isn't just to simply release data because if you do that you're creating data dumps you know open data portals that people don't use your open data project should spark conversation it should facilitate communication between your data provider and your data user and should at least disturb the status quo you know because open data without users is no better than closed data so one of the things that you have to make sure if if we're really doing and pushing open data in the philippines is that we also have users, and that's where data literacy comes in. That's where capacitating people to work with data comes in. Uh, and that's where co-creation and co-development comes in as well. So co-creation isn't just about putting different people in a room, gathering or consolidating their ideas, or finding the middle ground. It's more about confronting inherent power relations, making sure that people are heard, and making sure that those who have more are, is really are willing to give up more than those with the most to lose in in a certain scenario. Yeah. All of that goes through building what we call an open data culture, wherein data becomes integral and central to our day to day operations and not just an afterthought, wherein everyone can participate in a data conversation and use data for their civic duties. There are no shortcuts here. You know, building data, a culture of openness and data is a long and arduous process. And there will be a lot of stumbling blocks along the way, but both the journey and the destination are sure worth it. Um, and with that, I leave you with uh, this small you know, quote that the field of data is far too important to be left to data scientists. You know, that's why we, need, we don't need more data scientists. I have friends who are data scientists, but we need more data literate people. Uh, to actually utilize you know, open data and all the all whole bunch of data that we have here. And with that, uh, thank you very much. Maraming salamat sa pakikinig. Uh, and see you for in the next Pista next year. Thank you.